Hi. Since I've been repairing clocks, few people have asked me about my mainspring winder, which I made myself. And um, I thought in this video, I'll make another one, uh, probably an improved version of my existing one, although it's fine, but um, show you how I make it and so that you will be able to make one for yourself too. It's quite easy. It doesn't cost a lot of money. Uh, I think you could probably put it together for about 20 quid. Compare that to sort of five, 600 quid, what they charge to buy the all metal ones, which do the same job practically. So what I'm going to begin with is a basic list of things that you're going to need and some dimensions for you. These dimensions are not um, accurate. Uh, when I say accurate, you haven't got to copy me exactly. You can go slightly larger, slightly smaller. It doesn't matter because the end result is the same. It's what I've done. And uh, this will help you when you're planning on building your own one. For the main body, I'm using a quite thick plywood. I think it's 25 millimeter. Whereas with my original one, I think it's about 15 millimeter plywood. It's what I've had lying around. So again, it doesn't matter what material you use for this. And you'll need to go shopping for some threaded rod and a chuck, which I'll show you in a moment. So here's a quick view of the basic materials we'll be using. There are a few other bits and pieces, which I'll show you as I go along, but I'll go into more detail with these bits for now. The main parts are um, this is the base and this um, I've marked here so you can pause and write things down if you want to. I've gone 40 centimeters by 20 centimeters wide. Two of these uprights. Now they measure 20 centimeters wide by 15 high. I've um, I've cut it here just for aesthetic reasons, so I wanted it to look a bit prettier. So that's um, that's up to you if you want to take off those corners or not. So that's two of those, and then to clamp the the mainspring case into uh, it's a couple of pieces of these. These are 15 centimeters wide by four centimeters deep. Next, I've got some threaded rod, which I picked up at B&Q. Uh, this one is 10 millimeters wide. I, I forget what they call, it may be called M10. Maybe that's what this one is, but it's 10 millimeters wide. And this rod is eight millimeters wide. Also on the shopping list, um, in this case, I've gone for a keyless chuck. Um, it's a large size one, as opposed to the other one that I had, which I used a mini chuck on. That was off of Amazon. Bit of chain that I had lying around. Literally only need three links with this. And um, this is the remaining portion of my ratchet spanner. I used the other side of this when I made my first um, mainspring winder. So yeah, buy it, the cheapest ratchet spanner you can. This was a 10 and 11 size. So I'm now left with the 11 portion. And that's, that's what's gonna stop your mainspring just winding out of control when you're trying to take it out of its case. There are going to be some other bits and pieces that you're going to need as you go along. And for me, it's all about compromise. And I just go through my whole workshop looking for things that might fit. Sometimes, uh, and I've said this before in, a, in another video when I'm making something, I'm rummaging around looking for something. I don't know what it is, but I'll know when I find it. And it's one of them situations. And it's pretty much how I put, up, put everything together. Maybe it's the story of my life. And just to give you an overview of what I'll be making, here's my original mainspring winder. Here you can see the other half of the ratchet that I've used, which 
locks in place and you can switch it to turn it the other way. Here's the uh, mini chuck that I used the last time and one way or another I sort of cannibalised something else in order to get the mini chuck attached onto what in this case is just a smooth bar whereas with a new one I'm using a threaded bar and so this will be replaced by this piece here now the size doesn't matter really because this part isn't going to get in the way of anything all we want is just something to hold the um, the arbor when we're unwinding the spring and this part here is my sort of clamping method undo those slide those apart not such, not such a smooth action but I'm planning on solving that catching the barrel in between there dropping that down and then just tightening that up so apart from that there's my little piece of a three link chain which again I've got a, an idea of modification for that as well so that's what we'll be doing in this video if any of you are wondering why I'm wearing a scarf on your hot cup it's freezing out here in England Essex in particular I think it's hitting minus so um, I want to get out of this workshop as soon as possible now my first job is going to be making the hole in one of the uprights now the hole depends on how long you cut your ratchet spanner because um, you don't you don't want to make a hole down there and then find that this is in the way so I think I'll position it roughly there and dead in the middle I'll need to drill a hole through there and a corresponding hole through here so that the threaded rod can run through both pieces bit of smoke on there my drill bit needs sharpening now you don't have to have a pillar drill to do this you can do it with a hand drill it's just that I've only just bought this machine and right now I love using it so because I'm going through wood with a piece of threaded rod it, it can rub on there and catch and maybe even eventually wear it out because like, this is a sort of a saw like surface so when I say I don't know what I'm looking for until I've found it I came up with a solution uh, using a pen of either the reef or the case from a pen. I've got a couple of these and I have found that this tube fits in there perfectly. So it will give it a nice smooth action. So it narrows down there, but for the portion I need. So what I've done is I've drilled a hole which will fit that in nice like that and then eventually the thread will go the thread will go through there smoothly well that's the plan anyway i'm going to cut a piece of this bit of pen up and see how that works <laughs> now what i'll do is just 
mix up a little bit of this um, epoxy glue and glue these things into place. Just leaving a little bit sticking out each side so that I can trim it down flush once that's gone off. Okay, so while that's going off, um, I'll think about uh, the clamping system for the barrel. So what I've done is I've measured the middle of these two bits of wood. There's the middle there. I want to go one centimeter up from the middle, let's go for this one. So it's one centimeter high, and then 20 centimeters from the middle, it gives us a span of 40 millimeters altogether. Sorry, when I said 20 centimeters, I meant 20 millimeters. Once I've got that shape, I, in this instance, want to cut out a angle with my uh, original um, machine I made a round cut but just feel like maybe an angle might be a little bit better because being an angle when you've got a circle it's when I'm compressing both sides like this you got four points of contact one there, one there, one there, one there. Whereas with the circle cut, you've only got a little bit on the top and a little bit on the bottom. That's my uh, understanding of it. So I think this will be an improvement anyway. So next, I'm going to want to drill a couple of holes through, the, through both pieces from top to bottom. So I'll make my markings for those. It hasn't got to be anywhere particular. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll go in that sort of distance, which in my case will be, yeah, about 25 millimeters. Right, this is the next day. I couldn't hack the cold any longer, so I had to go in and I've come back out today. Today is six degrees, which is kind of warm compared to yesterday. So we'll get back on to finishing off the, the barrel holders today. So in this case, I've just um, cut a couple of pieces of wood into a circle, made them look nice, and embedded the nut into the bottom. And they just screw on there like that. As I say, you don't have to do it that way. That's a little bit tricky. Um, you could just as easily use the 
butterflies and they do exactly the same thing. Next stage is um, showing you on this model. Um, here you've got the ratchet and to stop the ratchet from just spinning round and round in circles I've put a couple of bars in there and the reason for it being bars is so that it can slide up and down and still have a ratchet action on it. So I mean on this one I use a bit of threaded wad but I have um, found in my collection just a bit of mild steel six millimeter rod which I'm going to use for this one. What I'm planning to do here is so that'll go there, that'll go there and these rods will be embedded in here and into there a couple of them like that so um, my spacing for these two is going to be 13 centimeters so I've cut the bars at 15 centimeters so that I can sink them in both sides sit there like that. So next stage is uh, for me to screw the upright into the bottom, secure that and then think about connecting this up and then the handle and we're done. This is on really nice and solidly now. I used a uh, hundred millimeter screws on this. I haven't bothered with glue. I don't think it needs it. You can see it's really tight. The next thing to work on is the rod. Now if I push this rod through here, see how that slides backwards and forwards. Take our chuck, I'll screw that on there. Now I want enough movement so that it comes up to the face of the barrel or the cap of the barrel uh, to grab onto the arbor. So I'm going to give it that plus a little bit more and then decide where I want to cut it, which is going to be, I'll just use a little bit of tape and mark this. I think, it, think I'll cut it there provisionally and if I feel I need to make any longer, um, sh if I can want to shorten it, I can. I can't lengthen it afterwards. So that will move in and out up to that point there, like that. I didn't film myself making this handle because I honestly didn't know what I was going to make. And um, I just sort of kind of went with the flow of things. And again, as usual, rummaged around to see what I'd found to make a handle. So this is what I've come up with. Now we've got the threaded bar which is now cut uh, to length, used a piece of wood, drilled through it and um, put the bar through and then drilled through the wood, through the bar and I've put a brass pin through there. That brass pin is to stop the the threaded rod from slipping and then just going berserk when the spring is under tension. 
So while I was at it, um, I couldn't decide whether I wanted to have just one handle like a crank or have a double handle. And uh, because I found two of these little knobs in one of my cabinets there, I thought, well, why not use both of them and have two little, uh, two turning facilities. No real reason for it at all. Now, this will slide through there, go through there, that uh, and screwing onto there, and then we've got a turning thingy. But before we do that, what I need to do is now I want to tighten these nuts. In this position before I tighten the nuts I want to add a little bit of this lock tight because I want I'm going to lock this little spanner in place and I don't want the screws ever loosening up so that's the position I want it in which is sort of the furthermost of this handle so the handles pushed as far as that way as possible few drops of this on there tighten that side up in actual fact you know what I'm going to do move this away some of that on there now tighten it really tight So there's that action. Now, um, next stage is to put this on. In this case, the thread on the chuck didn't quite match up to the thread that I'd bought on this M10 stuff, or whatever it is. Uh, the, the thread in the chuck was uh, finer. So I just recut the threads matching the thread on this, and now it works perfectly. I use a pretty cheap kit, it's about 16 quid from um, Machine Mart and always a handy kit to have. So I want to make sure that the chuck doesn't come off at all so I'm going to use a nut on there to tighten it up to. So there's the basic thing so far. The only thing left now is the hook which catches on to the end of the mainspring and then we're done. I've got this far and I've realised I've made a fatal error. Um, it's not the worst thing in the world but it's pretty bad and I don't know if I'm going to salvage it now. Chances are, if you're watching this, I've salvaged it because I won't be uploading a video of my failures. 
It's to do with this chuck. Um, it seemed like a brilliant idea and I thought, yeah, nice big chunky chuck, that'd be handy and better than the silly little one that I've got. On this, you know, with like a tiny little thing, I thought like, yeah, something chunky, be nicer. As I said, the whole idea was for me to be upgrading the original one. What I forgot, what I failed to remember is, is these, my spring holders. Now, normally they slide over. They sit at the back here. I wind up my spring, slot this over into the barrel and then pull the whole spring out. Nice, got a nice fit on that. Look at that, it's miles out. It's ridiculously miles out. So, trouble is I've designed this with this sort of heavy duty 10 millimeter rod and um, I can't go sticking one of those little um, chucks on there now, that ain't gonna work. Or I don't see myself creating a way for something like that to work. So, and I, I didn't buy that, that, the chuck off of that one. That one came off of a, one of these hand drills. And I haven't seen something like that particular one anywhere. So it's really annoying because I've frozen my nuts off um, for the last two days out here trying to put this together and it, it looks really nice and really chunky and really sturdy and uh, now this. I want to see if I can butcher this. So, as I said, uh, if you're watching this, I've succeeded, but um, at this point, I even I don't know if I'm going to succeed. Uh, but what uh, what I'm going to do is just mess around with it. I don't know, it, it cost me like fiver, so if I ruin it, I don't care. Uh, basically, I'm going to try to break off all this plastic and trim it down on whatever way I can. I'm not going to bother filming this because tools are going to be flying all across the workshop while I do this. And uh, see if I can come up with a solution. This is a mad brained idea and um, just because I thought it might be clever I thought I'd film this. Basically I've Put, um, the chuck connected it to my drill basically and I've got it spinning the opposite way to this the way this is spinning and I was trying to just wear it out until there's enough clearance for my um, mainspring um, holders <laughs> Here's the outcome of that venture. I've worn it right down to the point now where it doesn't unlock. I can't lock, I can't get that bit of thread out now. Remember, if you're watching this up to this point now, I would have found a solution, but the solution's going to be in a week's time, two weeks' time, I don't know when. So this um, two day video is going to end up becoming like a one month video. I'm gutted because I was doing so well and this was looking like such a good spring winder. And I thought I'd made it better than the last one, but apparently the first one was my better one. Um, I will find a solution, I, I think I will anyway, even if I have to try and use one of those little mini chucks. Uh, the trouble is, as I say, the ones I'm seeing online are different to this one. They only open up to three and a half millimeters. 
and the arbor on the mainspring can be about four millimeters, even a little bit lot bigger. So as I say, I got lucky with this this one, which was off of a like a hand drill thing, and it's got an opening of around sort of six millimeters, which is perfect. Um, I don't know the answer yet, but um, I'll think of something. Right, it's been a few days uh, since I've been back in the workshop. I've been thinking about this problem and um, kind of came up which I think is going to be a solution. I'll show you what I'm planning on. I was um, thinking of doing something along the lines of kind of utilizing my um, letdown tool onto the mainspring winder. Uh, the idea being is that because these are parts are removable and I've got a set of three of these uh, wouldn't it be good if I could somehow connect them you know, to this here like that but I'd want to be able to change them and put the different sizes in according to the arbor which it needs to attach onto so that got me thinking so I can't just sort of screw that on there or you know put a pin through there and have that there permanent that wouldn't work for me it's got to be interchangeable so um, because back in the day um, amongst my various uh, sort of businesses at one point I used to do a bit of plumbing and stuff like that I remembered um, these the bit that I want. A uh, tubular spanner set. Okay. Now I've actually got some of these but I've left them um, at my son's so because I couldn't wait I just ordered this set for seven quid and it's, it's got all the sizes and this is the one I'm interested in because this slots into there and that can wind like that and then I could change it and put the other one on which is that size and then I've got the other sets which can all go in there so all I have to do is connect this thing to here and you would have noticed I've got a little red mark which that red mark indicates how deep that goes in there so that's I can't cut this any less than that I'm also trying to work out how much distance I need between uh, the end of the barrel um, and this as well when this is out um, yeah I'm sort of kind of th lots of thoughts here but more or less what it boils down to is that I want to cut it about there I think roughly there chop that off get so then that gives me a couple of centimeters to attach onto here which I haven't decided on how I'm going to do it yet but once I've got that there on there then it is in fact better than having the chuck because I literally just bung in whatever one I want then I'll begin with sawing that off, butcher that, it's worth seven quid to uh, buy this set even if I lose one, one uh, tube and work out how to attach it onto there. Right, I've cut that now and um, it's about the size I want but what I've just noticed is, noticed is that uh, the hole there is smaller than the width of the threaded bar. 
wholly marginally, which is leading me to think that perhaps if I tap that inside there and put a thread in there, then I'll be able to screw this on and maybe drill and put a uh, pin through there to lock it into place as well. So that will be my next job, um, tapping the inside of this. That's a 1.5 That screws on there quite nicely. It's a bit loose. I think um, my threading could have been a bit deeper on there. Now I can, I suppose, use this. lock that onto there that gives me enough clearance I think I'm going to have to test it with a um, with a barrel So here we are with an answer to what was a nightmare problem for me and it's um, in fact better than it was if I was going to use the chuck. I'm really happy with this because I've got these bits now which are interchangeable and um, just sort of somewhat easier to use by using this method. I've got my spring holders which go on there, here's the smallest one they're not going to get in the way of anything there uh, you just saw me now I had a spring washer on that and a, a bit of thread lock as well and I've locked that into place now this tube will just stay there permanently oh, the final job in this uh, on this machine is uh, for me to work out a hooking mechanism for my to, to catch the end of the spring and as I say I am going to use a little bit of chain which I have somewhere there we go I'll take a few links off of that and decide exactly how much I actually need and uh, what sort of mechanism I'm going to use to lock the spring on Christmas morning and um, I'm getting moaned at if 
for being outside here. But uh, there was just one little bit I wanted to do for today and then I'll just finish off tomorrow. So let me quickly show you before I get beaten up. Right, I've um, taken a couple of little pieces of wood and drilled each end of them like that. Piece of metal rod, go through there. I've got my chain, uh, which I've cut to length, and I've shaped that way to grab the chain, uh, to grab the uh, mainspring rather. That'll go on there like that. That'll go on there like that. And then the whole thing will be screwed to fit there and work like that. So it's now Boxing Day and um, back in my workshop. We're not going nowhere today so I've got all the time in the world. Um, the winder is now completed and all that's left is for me to try it and see how it goes. So I've taken a barrel out of a clock just for this purpose and let's see how we get on. Right, so the barrel I've chosen here has got a six, um, well, size six arbor. Fits in there perfectly. Now, that will go in there. Choose my correct size uh, spring holder. Shove that behind there. And the first thing I've got to do is line this up. So I'll just drop down the adjuster. where that should be so now tighten up my spring barrel That's the spring captured, and now unlock it. That's cool. And there's the spring. the barrel and put it in that way so the reason for that is I want the um, hole there in the barrel and the end of the arbor there to locate together and that will keep everything centralized that's just slipped out that back in there 
So I'll take my chain and hook it into the tail end of the mainspring. And start winding. One spring released. Now I'll just go through the reverse of that process to put the spring back in. My only criticism so far because of the method I've used is could have had a little bit more space between here which means this thing could have gone back a little bit further there but that's it's not a real issue just might have been a bit nicer. So, spring hooked in, the arbor to meet the hole there. Switch that and start winding. First of all, I'll uh, locate the spring so that the catch, the hook inside the barrel lines up with this hole on the end of the spring. Which is about there, I think, yep. So that's the build of the mainspring winder. There's a couple of little modifications I want to make uh, just to enhance it a little bit further. I want to get hold of a little bit of rubber just to line it inside there and there just to stop the barrel from sp spinning around in the wood which isn't a particularly grippy surface. 
So I'll look for something for that. I'd like to stick some sort of uh, rubber legs to the underneath it. When I say legs, just uh, rubber pads or something underneath it, just to lift it off the table surface. I, I haven't recessed these, so that'd be another reason to do it. And also to stop it from sliding around as much. And then finally, just give the whole thing a nice coat of varnish or wax or something like that to enhance it. Other than that, this is a brilliant Mark II. Um, not that the first one wasn't a great machine anyway, but this one just goes that little bit further. And I think if I made one again, I don't even know what I would do to enhance it even further. As you saw, I left the uh, handle here as a sort of a T-bar handle and I wasn't sure if that was a good idea or not but um, it actually works out really good because there, there were times when I was winding up the spring when just doing it on the edge so it seems to throw the whole thing out of um, control whereas being able to hold the middle of the handle like that gave me more control and um, yeah so I'm glad I actually did do that it, it, it wasn't a clever thought, it was just um, me trying to be a, a little bit fancy with it, but turns out that it was a good design after all. And of course, the main thing which caused me so much grief was um, that the chuck that I bought for this didn't didn't fit or didn't wouldn't work. And then coming up with this idea, which turned out to be absolutely brilliant. I love this method now where I can just use these from my letdown tool. And um, it is so much simpler. Again, sometimes you, you get trapped or, or you get stuck on an idea and you don't know how to get past it. But when you do get past it, you actually find a better way than what your original idea was. I find that quite often um, in my sort of mad little inventions and things like that. So there you have it, how to build your own mainspring winder. It's prob, I mean, I've used a lot of stuff which I already had laying around at home, but I suppose if you had to go and buy everything for it, including the wood and whatnot, um 30 quid to make this when they're looking around sort of five six hundred pound for a professional nice metal one and they're very nice i wouldn't say no to one but i don't think they'll do the job any better than i do this as you see how it works it's pretty quick pretty efficient and very very <coughs> sturdy so i hope you enjoyed this video and do let me know if you've uh, attempted to build your own one and how you got along with it. Meanwhile, I'll um, see you on my next video, whenever that might be, or wherever that might be.